Hey programmers, today I want to work on a layout view that's specific to all those multi-instance LED fixtures that seem to be popping up on every show that we do these days. And there's a couple of tricks that we can use so that we don't have to spend a ton of time on it. If this is your first time at Console Trainer, welcome. I'm Kat West and I want to make our programming lives a little bit easier. Ever looked at these units in 3D and been disappointed? Even with the best of 3D models, it's hard to see exactly what those cells are doing. And also, a lot of the time, the visualizer just can't keep up with the speed of the changes. But the layout view, that's always spot on. I mean, compare these two running the same queue. I am absolutely going to use the layout view as my reference while prefizzing. And bonus, this is going to be handy if you're going to use the bitmapping feature. We're going to walk through this today with a simple plot. We've got some X4 bar 20s some JDC1s, and some BIK20s. Let's start by selecting the cells from the X4 bars and dropping them into a new layout. If you watched my video on cleaner, color-coded layouts, you already know that we can use our stage cameras to lay these out. And that's worked out okay here, but it's not always perfect. I want to do a little cleanup. I want to widen their size so that I can see what their cells are really doing. Before we bring in anything else, let me play a couple of cues. Okay, well, I can kind of see the effect running, but between the outline of the cells and the markers on top, I don't love it. So first, I want to change their border color to black. Closer, but when I turn off my cue, they disappear. So let's change the background. All right, in our layout options, let's go to layout data, and in the background, Pick a color that you like. Okay, uh, also I wanna get rid of those markers that were in there. So right next to that, I'm gonna turn marker off. Okay, and let me play my cue. Ah, oh, so much better. These cells are pretty small, but if you're working with larger cells, you might want to go back into those options into fixture and channel default and maybe turn off your uh, show dimmer bar and show dimmer value. And if you want all of the remaining fixtures to come into this layout with a black border around them, in the same window, you can change border color to black. Okay, next I'm bringing in just my first JDC one. I already know that I'm not going to like the way that the camera arrangement is going to place these, so I'm just going to do them manually. Now in real life, the white cells of the JDC are in between the colored cells, but I don't really like that in my layout, so I like to put my white cells just above the color cells. The white background of the white cells doesn't bother me, but for whatever reason, I just prefer to have my color cells have a teal kind of a background. Okay, so I got my first JDC one set up, and I'm not gonna take the time to do that same process with all the rest of them or try to clumsily do them all at once. I'm just gonna clone them in. To do that, I want to clone the group of my first JDC ones to a second group I've created that has all of my remaining JDC ones from the top row of my plot. Remember, selection order is everything. The syntax for this is clone group X at group Y if layout Z, where group X is the fixtures that you're cloning from, group Y is the fixtures that you're cloning to, and layout Z is the number of the layout that we're currently working in. I'll type clone. Select my group, hit at, and select the group that I'm cloning to, hit if, and then touch the layout that I'm working in, please. I want to hit merge. By the way, I'm hitting the copy key twice to put clone on my command line. So now my new units are just all hovering over the first one, so I'm going to move them out of the way. I've got two more rows of JDC ones to do, so I'm just going to use that same cloning trick. Oh, 
Okay, now that they're in, let's try a queue and see what this looks like. Yeah, okay, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, last, let's do those BIs. I wanna do the same thing where I just lay out the first one and then I clone all the rest of them in. Because their layout is circular, I'm gonna use the circle tool to arrange each ring, changing the radius start for each ring size and adjusting the angle so that each cell is in the right place. And there's always a little bit more adjustment that I want to do. Once that's done, I want to remove the border and test a queue to make sure that I've done this right. Now that I'm happy with the first one, I'll just clone him to the remaining BIs and then slide them all into their homes. Yes, I've already made a matrix that figures out the number of BIs so that I, I could slide these with ease, but isn't it just so satisfying to watch them all slide over? It's almost calming to watch this happen. I'm liking this, but let's try a couple more cues. Yeah, I think I'm pretty happy here. At this point, you might want to Drop in maybe some group buttons for easy selection or throw in some labels, you know, just make it your own. For more ideas about layouts, check out my video where I talk about turning a layout into a feedback view. And of course, there's the other video that we mentioned called Cleaner Color-Coded Layouts. Thanks for watching. See you soon.